친애하는 국민 여러분. My fellow citizens. 20세기의 마지막 대통령 취임식에서 At this last presidential inauguration of the 20th century. 우리의 눈을 들어 다음 세기에 우리를 기다리는 도전을 바라봅시다. Let us lift our eyes toward the challenges that await us in the next century. 시간과 기회가 우리를 새로운 세기, 즉 새천년의 경계에 있게 했을 뿐만 아니라 It is our great good fortune that time and chance have put us not only at the edge of a new century, in a new millennium. 인간사의 밝고 새로운 전망의 문턱 But on the edge of a bright new prospect in human affairs. 다가올 수십 년 동안 우리의 나아갈 길과 특징을 명확히 할 순간에 있게 한 것은 크나큰 행운입니다. A moment that will define our course and our character for decades to come. 우리는 우리의 오랜 민주주의를 영원히 젊게 유지해야 하겠습니다. We must keep our old democracy forever young. 약속이 이 땅에 대한 조상들의 인도를 따라 우리의 시선을 새로운 약속이 이 땅에 고정시킵시다. Guided by the ancient vision of a promised land, let us set our sights upon a land of new promise. 미국의 약속은 우리 모두가 평등하다는 투철한 신념을 지닌 채 18세기에 태어났습니다. The promise of America was born in the 18th century out of the bold conviction that we are all created equal. 그 약속은 우리가 대륙을 가로지르던, 연방을 수호했던, 끔찍한 노예 제도를 폐지했던 19세기에 널리 퍼졌고 지켜졌습니다. It was extended and preserved in the 19th century when our nation spread across the continent, saved the union, and abolished the awful scourge of slavery. 그후 혼란과 영광 속에서 그 약속은 세계로 퍼져 20세기를 미국의 시대로 만들었습니다. Then, in turmoil and triumph, that promise exploded onto the world stage to make this the American century. 정말 대단한 세기였습니다. And what a century it has been. 미국은 세계 최강의 산업 국가가 되었고, America became the world's mightiest industrial power. 두 번의 세계 대전과 긴 냉전을 통해 독재에서 세계를 구했고, saved the world from tyranny in two world wars and a long cold war and time and again. 우리처럼 자유의 축복을 갈망하는 수많은 사람들을 도왔습니다. Reached out across the globe to millions who, like us, longed for the blessings of liberty. 그러는 동안 우리는 많은 중산층과 노후 보장을 배출하였고 Along the way, Americans produced a great middle class and security in old age. 세계 최고의 배움의 중심지를 건설하였고 모든 이에게 공립학교를 개방하였으며 Built unrivaled centers of learning and opened public schools to all. 원자를 조개었고 하늘을 탐험하였으며 컴퓨터와 마이크로 칩을 발명하였고 Split the atom and explored the heavens invented, the computer and the microchip. 흑인과 소수민족을 위한 시민혁명을 이룩하고, 여성에게 시민권과 기회와 고위직을 확대하여 정의의샘을 한층 깊게 하였습니다. And deepened the wellspring of justice by making a revolution in civil rights for African Americans and all minorities, and extending the circle of citizenship, opportunity and dignity to women. 이제 세 번째 시기인 새천년이 또 다른 선택의 시간이 다가옵니다. Now, for the third time, a new century is upon us, and another time to choose. 우리는 조국을 대서양에서 태평양으로 확장하는 선택으로 19세기를 시작하였습니다. We began the 19th century with a choice to spread our nation from coast to coast. 우리는 산업혁명을 자유, 기업, 보존, 인격의 가치를 위한 수단으로 20세기를 선택하였습니다. 
we began the 20th century with a choice to harness the industrial revolution to our values of free enterprise, conservation, and human decency. 이러한 선택이 모든 것을 바꾸었습니다. Those choices made all the difference. 21세기의 여명에서 자유민 각자는 정보화 시대, 세계화 사회의 힘을 형성하기 위한 우리 국민의 무한한 가능성을 촉진하기 위한 더 완전한 연합을 형성하기 위한 선택을 해야 합니다. At the dawn of the 21st century, a free people must now choose to shape the forces of the information age and the global society to unleash the limitless potential of all our people and, yes, to form a more perfect union. 지난번 우리가 모였을 때 우리의 이 새로운 미래로의 행진이 오늘의 행진보다 더 확실해 보였습니다. When last we gathered, our march to this new future seemed less certain than it does today. 우리는 그때 우리 국가를 새롭게 하기 위한 명확한 진로를 만들기로 맹세하였습니다. We vowed then to set a clear course to renew our nation. 지난 4년간 우리는 비극으로 상처 받았고 도전으로 고무되었으며 성취하여 강해졌습니다. In these four years, we have been touched by tragedy, exhilarated by challenge, strengthened by achievement. 미국은 세계에서 없어서는 안될 국가로 우뚝 서 있습니다. America stands alone as the world's indispensable nation. 다시 한번 우리 경제는 세계 최강이 되었습니다. Once again, our economy is the strongest on earth. 또 다시 우리는 튼튼한 가정, 번영하는 사회, 더 나은 교육 기회, 더 깨끗한 환경을 건설하고 있습니다. Once again, we are building stronger families, thriving communities, better educational opportunities, a cleaner environment. 한때는 악화될 듯한 문제점이 이제 우리의 노력에 굴복하고 있습니다. Problems that once seemed destined to deepen now bend to our efforts. 거리는 안전해지고 기록적인 숫자의 시민들이 실업연금에서 직장으로 돌아가게 되었습니다. Our streets are safer and record numbers of our fellow citizens have moved from welfare to work. 그리고 다시 한번 우리는 우리 시대를 위한 정부 역할에 대한 논쟁을 종식시켰습니다. And once again, we have resolved for our time a great debate over the role of government. 오늘 우리는 선언할 수 있습니다. 정부가 문제가 아니고 정부가 해결책도 아닙니다. Today we can declare, government is not the problem, and government is not the solution. 우리 미국인, 우리가 해결책입니다. We, the American people, we are the solution. 우리의 선조들은 그 점을 잘 알았으며, 우리에게 수세기 동안 지속될 강력하면서도, 우리의 공통된 도전에 직면하고, 매일 공통된 이상을 발전시킬 만큼 유연한 민주주의를 물려주었습니다. Our founders understood that well and gave us a democracy strong enough to endure for centuries, flexible enough to face our common challenges and advance our common dreams in each new day. 시대가 변함에 따라 정부도 당연히 변해야 합니다. As times change, so government must change. 우리는 새 천년을 위한 새로운 정부를 필요로 합니다. We need a new government for a new century. 우리들이 해 우리의 모든 문제를 해결하려 들지 않을 만큼 겸손하지만 문제 해결을 위한 수단을 제공할 만큼 강력한 정부 보다 작고 재정 내에서 운용하며 적은 것으로 더 많은 일을 하는 정부를 필요로 합니다. Humble enough not to try to solve all our problems for us, but strong enough to give us the tools to solve our problems for ourselves. A government that is smaller lives within its means and does more with less. 하지만 정부가 세계에서 우리의 가치와 이익을 옹호해 주고 국민 생활을 변화시킬 힘을 국민에게 주려면 정부는 일을 더 해야 합니다. Yet where it can stand up for our values and interests in the world, 
and where it can give Americans the power to make a real difference in their everyday lives. Government should do more, not less. 우리 새로운 정부의 주사명은 국민에게 보장이 아닌 기회를 더 나은 삶을 만들 실질적인 기회를 주는 것입니다. The preeminent mission of our new government is to give all Americans an opportunity, not a guarantee, but a real opportunity to build better lives. 친애하는 국민 여러분 뿐만 아니라 미래는 우리 손에 있습니다. Beyond that, my fellow citizens, the future is up to us. 우리 조상들은 우리의 자유와 연방 수호가 책임감 있는 심한 정신에 있다고 가르쳤습니다. Our founders taught us that the preservation of our liberty and our union depends upon responsible citizenship. 우리는 새 천년에 적합한 새로운 책임감이 필요합니다. And we need a new sense of responsibility for a new century. 정부 혼자 할수 없는 새로운 일이 있습니다. There is work to do, work that government alone cannot do. 어린이에게 읽기를 가르치고 Teaching children to read. 실업자를 고용하며 Hiring people off welfare rolls. 마약, 폭력, 범죄로부터 우리의 거리를 구하기 위해 잠긴 문과 잠겨진 창문에서 나와야 하며 Coming out from behind locked doors and shuttered windows to help reclaim our streets from drugs and gangs and crime. 다른 이들을 돕기 위해 우리의 생활에서 시간을 할애해야 합니다. Taking time out of our own lives to serve others. 나름대로 우리 각각은 자신과 가족뿐만 아니라 이웃과 국가를 위한 개인적 책임을 져야 합니다. Each and every one of us, in our own way, must assume personal responsibility, not only for ourselves and our families, but for our neighbors and our nation. 우리의 가장 중요한 책임은 새 천년에 적합한 새로운 공동체 정신을 수용하는 것입니다. Our greatest responsibility is to embrace a new spirit of community for a new century. 우리 중 어느 누군가가 성공하려면 우리는 하나의 미국으로 성공해야 합니다. For any one of us to succeed, we must succeed as one America. 과거 우리 의도자는 미래 의도자으로 남아 있습니다. 우리는 하나의 공동 운명을 지닌 하나의 국가, 하나의 국민이 될수 있습니까? 없습니까? The challenge of our past remains the challenge of our future. Will we be one nation, one people, with one common destiny, or not? 우리는 하나로 뭉치겠습니까? 흩어지겠습니까? Will we all come together or come apart? 인종차별은 미국이 갖고 있는 끈질긴 저주였습니다. The divide of race has been America's constant curse. 새로운 이민자들의 물결은 낡은 편견에 새로운 목표를 가져다 줍니다. And each new wave of immigrants gives new targets to old prejudices. 종교적 또는 정치적 신념이라는 허울을 쓴 편견과 경멸은 다를 바 없습니다. Prejudice and contempt, cloaked in the pretense of religious or political conviction, are no different. 이러한 세력이 과거에 우리나라를 거의 파멸시켰습니다. These forces have nearly destroyed our nation in the past. 그들은 아직도 우리를 괴롭힙니다. 그들은 광신적 테러를 부추겼습니다. They plague us still. They fuel the fanaticism of terror. 그들은 전 세계 분열된 국가의 수많은 사람들의 삶을 고통스럽게 하고 있습니다. And they torment the lives of millions in fractured nations all around the world. 이러한 망상은 증오하는 자는 물론 당하는 자까지도 가능성을 박탈한 채 파멸시킵니다. These obsessions cripple both those who hate and, of course, those who are hated, robbing both of what they might become. 우리는 영혼 깊숙이 숨어 있는 음흉한 충동에 굴복할 수 없으며 굴복하지도 않을 것입니다. We cannot, we will not 
succumb to the dark impulses that lurk in the far regions of the soul everywhere. 우리는 충동을 극복할 것입니다. We shall overcome them. 우리는 서로 편안함을 느끼는 국민의 포용력으로 충동을 대체할 것입니다. And we shall replace them with the generous spirit of a people who feel at home with one another. 우리의 풍부한 인종, 종교, 정치적 다양성은 21세기에는 하늘이 준 선물이 될 것입니다. Our rich texture of racial, religious and political diversity will be a godsend in the 21st century. 같이 살고, 같이 배우고, 같이 일하고, 같이 새로운 연대를 이룰 수 있는 자에게 은총이 있을 것입니다. Great rewards will come to those who can live together, learn together, work together, forge new ties that bind together. 이 새로운 시대가 옴에 따라 우리는 이미 대강의 윤곽을 볼수 있습니다. As this new era approaches, we can already see its broad outlines. 10년 전 인터넷은 물리학자의 신비스런 영역이었습니다. Ten years ago, the internet was the mystical province of physicists. 오늘날 인터넷은 수백만 학생을 위한 흔한 백과사전이 되었습니다. Today, it is a commonplace encyclopedia for millions of school children. 지금 과학자들은 인간 생명의 청사진을 해독하고 있습니다. Scientists now are decoding the blueprint of human life. 우리가 가장 두려워하는 질병의 치료도 머지않아 가능할 것입니다. Cures for our most feared illnesses seem close at hand. 세계는 더 이상 적대적인 양진영으로 나뉘어져 있지 않습니다. The world is no longer divided into two hostile camps. 이제 우리는 한때 우리의 적이었던 나라와 유대를 쌓고 있습니다. Instead, now we are building bonds with nations that once were our adversaries. 무역과 문화 교류의 확대는 전 세계의 재물과 정신을 증진시킬 기회를 제공합니다. Growing connections of commerce and culture give us a chance to lift the fortunes and spirits of people the world over. 그리고 인류 역사상 최초로 이행성 위에서 독재 체제보다 민주주의 하에 사는 사람들이 더 많습니다. And for the very first time in all of history, more people on this planet live under democracy than dictatorship. 친애하는 국민 여러분, 이 놀라운 세계를 되돌아보며 우리는 모를지도 모릅니다. My fellow Americans, as we look back at this remarkable century, we may ask 우리는 단순히 순종하는 것이 아니라 미국이 20세기에 이룬 성취를 능가하고 미국의 유산의 오점을 남겼던 끔찍한 유혈 참극을 피하길 바랄 수 있을 것인가? Can we hope not just to follow, but even to surpass the achievements of the 20th century in America and to avoid the awful bloodshed that stained its legacy? 그 질문에 대하여 여기 계신 모든 미국인과 전 지역의 미국인들은 확고한 대답을 해야만 합니다. 예, 라고. To that question, every American here and every American in our land today must answer a resounding yes. 이것이 우리의 핵심과 업입니다. 정부의 새로운 꿈과 새로운 책임감, 새로운 공동체 정신으로 우리는 미국의 여정을 계속할 것입니다. This is the heart of our task, with a new vision of government, a new sense of responsibility, a new spirit of community, we will sustain America's journey. 신대륙에서 찾았던 약속을 우리는 새로운 약속이 이 땅에서 다시 찾을 것입니다. The promise we sought in a new land we will find again in a land of new promise. 이 신대륙에서 교육은 국민 모두의 가장 소중한 재산이 될 것입니다. In this new land, education will be every citizen's most prized possession. 우리의 학교는 모든 소녀, 소년 의눈의 가능성을 점화시키는 세계 최고의 수준을 가질 것입니다. Our schools will have the highest standards in the world, 
igniting the spark of possibility in the eyes of every girl and every boy. 고등교육의 기회가 개방될 것입니다. And the doors of higher education will be open to all. 정보화 시대의 지식과 힘은 몇몇 소수가 아닌 모든 교실, 모든 도서관, 모든 어린이에게 주어질 것입니다. The knowledge and power of the information age will be within reach not just of the few, but of every classroom, every library, every child. 부모와 자식은 일할 시간뿐만 아니라 함께 읽고 노는 시간도 가질 것입니다. Parents and children will have time not only to work, but to read and play together. 그리고 그들은 식탁에서 더 좋은 집, 더 좋은 직업, 대학 입학 계획을 세울 것입니다. And the plans they make at their kitchen table will be those of a better home, a better job, the certain chance to go to college. 거리는 아무도 그들에게 총을 쏘지 않으며 그들에게 더 이상 마약을 팔지 않기 때문에 다시 어린이 웃음소리로 메아리칠 것입니다. Our streets will echo again with the laughter of our children because no one will try to shoot them or sell them drugs anymore. 일할 수 있는 이들은 오늘날 영원한 빈곤층이 내일은 성장하는 중산층의 일부로 일할 것입니다. Everyone who can work will work with today's permanent underclass part of tomorrow's growing middle class. 의학의 새로운 기적은 마침내 현재 치료를 요청한 사람뿐만 아니라 오랫동안 거부되었던 어린이와 빈곤층까지 닿을 것입니다. New miracles of medicine at last will reach not only those who can claim care now, but the children and hardworking families too long denied. 우리는 평화와 자유를 수호할 것이며 테러와 파괴에 대하여 강력한 방어 태세를 유지할 것입니다. We will stand mighty for peace and freedom and maintain a strong defense against terror and destruction. 어린이들은 화생방 무기의 위협 없이 편히 잠들 것입니다. Our children will sleep free from the threat of nuclear, chemical or biological weapons. 항구와 공항, 농장과 공장은 혁신과 아이디어로 번창할 것입니다. Ports and airports, farms and factories will thrive with trade and innovation and ideas. 세계 최고의 민주주의가 전체 민주주의 세계를 이끌 것입니다. And the world's greatest democracy will lead the whole world of democracies. 우리의 새로운 약속이 있다는 국가 본연의 의무를 다하는 국가 균형 예산을 갖춘 결코 가치의 균형을 잃지 않는 국가가 될 것입니다. Our land of new promise will be a nation that meets its obligations, a nation that balances its budget but never loses the balance of its values. 우리 조부모님이 안락한 은퇴와 의료 혜택을 가지며 그들의 손자가 우리가 그들을 위한 혜택이 지속되도록 절실한 개혁을 했었다는 것을 아는 국가 말입니다. A nation where our grandparents have secure retirement and health care, and their grandchildren know we have made the reforms necessary to sustain those benefits for their time. 심지어는 우리의 물과 공기와 신비스러운 대지와 같은 천혜의 자원을 보호하면서 세계 최고의 생산적인 경제를 뒷받침하는 국가 말입니다. A nation that fortifies the world's most productive economy even as it protects the great natural bounty of our water, air, and majestic land. 이 새로운 약속의 땅에서 And in this land of new promise. 우리는 편협한 이해관계로 떠드는 목소리보다 국민의 목소리가 항상 더 크게 들리고 국민의 참여도를 회복시키고 모든 미국인의 신뢰를 받도록 우리의 정치를 개혁할 것입니다. We will have reformed our politics so that the voice of the people will always speak louder than the din of narrow interests, regaining the participation and deserving the trust of all Americans. 친애하는 국민 여러분, 모든 시민의 잠재성을 실현하는 방향으로 전진하는 그러한 미국을 건설합시다. 
Fellow citizens, let us build that America, a nation ever moving forward toward realizing the full potential of all its citizens. 번영과 힘. 그것은 중요합니다. 그것을 지켜야 합니다. Prosperity and power, yes, they are important, and we must maintain them. 그러나 결코 잊지는 맙시다. 우리가 이룬 가장 위대한 발전과 우리가 이룰 가장 위대한 발전은 인간의 마음 속에 있다는 것을. But let us never forget the greatest progress we have made and the greatest progress we have yet to make is in the human heart. 결국 전 세계의 부와 수많은 군사력도 정신의 힘과 품위 앞에는 상대가 되지 못합니다. In the end. All the world's wealth and a thousand armies are no match for the strength and decency of the human spirit. 34년 전, 오늘날 우리가 칭송하는 그분이 이 길의 저쪽에서 국가의 양심을 감동시키는 말로 우리에게 말씀하셨습니다. 34 years ago, the man whose life we celebrate today spoke to us down there at the other end of this mall in words that moved the conscience of a nation. 예언자처럼 그분은 언젠가 미국이 각성하여 모든 국민을 법 앞에서 또한 마음속으로 동등하게 대할 것이라는 자신의 꿈을 이야기하였습니다. Like a prophet of old, he told of his dream that one day America would rise up and treat all its citizens as equals before the law and in the heart. 마틴 루터킹의 꿈은 미국의 꿈이었습니다. 그의 추구했던 바가 바로 우리의 추구하는 바입니다. 즉 참된 신념을 지닌 채 실어가기 위해 끊임없이 노력하는 것입니다. Martin Luther King's dream was the American dream. His quest is our quest. The ceaseless striving to live out our true creed. 우리 역사는 이 같은 꿈과 노력 위에서 이루어졌습니다. Our history has been built on such dreams and labors. 그리고 우리의 꿈과 노력으로 우리는 21세기에 미국의 약속을 이행할 것입니다. And by our dreams and labors, we will redeem the promise of America in the 21st century. 이러한 노력에 나는 나의 모든 힘과 직권을 바칠 것을 맹세합니다. To that effort I pledge all my strength and every power of my office. 나는 여기 모인 의원 여러분께 이 맹세에 동참하길 요청합니다. I ask the members of Congress here to join in that pledge. 미국 국민은 한정당에는 대통령을, 다른 한정당에는 의회를 맡겼습니다. The American people returned to office a president of one party and a Congress of another. 분명히 그들은 그들이 무척 개탄하는 사소한 언쟁과 극단적인 당파 정치를 조장하려고 이렇게 하지는 않았습니다. Surely, they did not do this to advance the politics of petty bickering and extreme partisanship they plainly deplore. 아닙니다. 국민은 대신에 우리가 분열을 치유하고 미국의 의무를 수행하기를 요구합니다. No, they call on us instead to be repairers of the breach and to move on with America's mission. 미국은 우리로부터 큰 것을 요구하고 받을 만합니다. 사소한 것에서 대범함이 나오지 않습니다. America demands and deserves big things from us, and nothing big ever came from being small. 번아딘 추기경이 생을 마감하면서 영원한 지혜로 남긴 말을 기억합시다. Let us remember the timeless wisdom of Cardinal Bernardine when facing the end of his own life. 시간이라는 귀중한 선물을 비난과 분열에 낭비하는 것은 잘못이다. He said, "It is wrong to waste the precious gift of time on acrimony and division." 친애하는 국민 여러분, 시간이라는 이 귀중한 선물을 낭비해서는 안 되겠습니다. Fellow citizens, we must not waste the precious gift of this time. 왜냐하면 우리 모두 인생이라는 같은 여정에 있으며 우리의 여정은 언젠가는 끝나기 때문입니다. For all of us are on that same journey of our lives, and our journey too will come to an end. 
그러나 우리 미국의 여정은 계속되어야 합니다. But the journey of our America must go on. 따라서 친애하는 미국인이여 우리는 강해져야 합니다. 용감히 맞서야 할 일이 많기 때문에 우리 시대의 요구 사항은 많고 다양합니다. And so, my fellow Americans, we must be strong, for there is much to dare. The demands of our time are great, and they are different. 신념과 용기로 인내와 감사하는 마음으로 그 요구에 대처합시다. Let us meet them with faith and courage, with patience and a grateful and happy heart. 오늘의 희망을 역사의 가장 숭고한 장으로 가꿉시다. Let us shape. The hope of this day into the noblest chapter in our history. 우리의 다리를 건설합시다. Yes, let us build our bridge. 축복받은 새로운 약속의 땅을 향해 모든 미국인이 건널 수 있는 충분히 넓고 튼튼한 다리를. A bridge wide enough and strong enough for every American to cross over to a blessed land of new promise. 우리가 아직 볼수 없고 그 이름도 결코 모르는 세대들이 Make those generations whose faces we cannot yet see, whose names we may never know. 우리는 사랑하는 조국을 모든 미국의 어린이를 위해, 미국의 꿈과 함께, 모든 미국인을 위해 더욱 더 완전한 결속의 약속과 함께 전 세계에 걸쳐 빛나는 미국의 빛나는 자유의 불꽃과 함께 새로운 세계로 이끌어 간노라고 말하게 되기를 기원합니다. Say of us here that we led our beloved land into a new century with the American dream alive for all her children with the American promise of a more perfect union a reality for all her people with America's bright flame of freedom spreading throughout all the world. 이 높은 곳에서부터 이 세기의 정점에서부터 나아갑시다. From the height of this place and the summit of this century, let us go forth. 하나님께서 우리 앞에 놓인 선한 일을 위해 우리의 손을 강하게 해 주시며 항상 우리 미국을 축복해 주시길 기원합니다. May God strengthen our hands for the good work ahead and always, always bless our America. My fellow citizens, at this last presidential inauguration of the 20th century, let us lift our eyes toward the challenges that await us in the next century. It is our great good fortune that time and chance have put us not only at the edge of a new century, in a new millennium, but on the edge of a bright new prospect in human affairs. A moment that will define our course and our character for decades to come. We must keep our old democracy forever young. Guided by the ancient vision of a promised land, let us set our sights upon a land of new promise. The promise of America was born in the 18th century out of the bold conviction that we are all created equal. It was extended and preserved in the 19th century, when our nation spread across the continent, saved the Union, and abolished the awful scourge of slavery. Then, in turmoil and triumph, that promise exploded onto the world stage to make this the American century. And what a century it has been. America became the world's mightiest industrial power. Saved the world from tyranny in two world wars and a long cold war and time and again. Reached out across the globe to millions who, like us, longed for the blessings of liberty. Along the way, Americans produced a great middle class and security in old age. Built unrivaled centers of learning and opened public schools to all. Split the atom and explored the heavens invented, the computer and the microchip. 
and deepened the wellspring of justice by making a revolution in civil rights for African Americans and all minorities, and extending the circle of citizenship, opportunity, and dignity to women. Now, for the third time, a new century is upon us, and another time to choose. We began the 19th century with a choice, to spread our nation from coast to coast. We began the 20th century with a choice, to harness the industrial revolution to our values of free enterprise, conservation, and human decency. Those choices made all the difference. At the dawn of the 21st century a free people must now choose to shape the forces of the information age and the global society, to unleash the limitless potential of all our people, and, yes, to form a more perfect union. When last we gathered, our march to this new future seemed less certain than it does today. We vowed then to set a clear course to renew our nation. In these four years, we have been touched by tragedy, exhilarated by challenge, strengthened by achievement. America stands alone as the world's indispensable nation. Once again, our economy is the strongest on earth. Once again, we are building stronger families, thriving communities, better educational opportunities, a cleaner environment. Problems that once seemed destined to deepen now bend to our efforts. Our streets are safer and record numbers of our fellow citizens have moved from welfare to work. And once again, we have resolved for our time a great debate over the role of government. Today we can declare, government is not the problem, and government is not the solution. We, the American people, we are the solution. Our founders understood that well and gave us a democracy strong enough to endure for centuries, flexible enough to face our common challenges and advance our common dreams in each new day. As times change, so government must change. We need a new government for a new century. Humble enough not to try to solve all our problems for us, but strong enough to give us the tools to solve our problems for ourselves. A government that is smaller, lives within its means, and does more with less. Yet where it can stand up for our values and interests in the world, and where it can give Americans the power to make a real difference in their everyday lives, government should do more, not less. The preeminent mission of our new government is to give all Americans an opportunity, not a guarantee, but a real opportunity to build better lives. Beyond that, my fellow citizens, the future is up to us. Our founders taught us that the preservation of our liberty and our union depends upon responsible citizenship. And we need a new sense of responsibility for a new century. There is work to do, work that government alone cannot do. Teaching children to read. Hiring people off welfare rolls. Coming out from behind locked doors and shuttered windows to help reclaim our streets from drugs and gangs and crime. Taking time out of our own lives to serve others. Each and every one of us, in our own way, must assume personal responsibility, not only for ourselves and our families, but for our neighbors and our nation. Our greatest responsibility is to embrace a new spirit of community for a new century. For any one of us to succeed, we must succeed as one America. The challenge of our past remains the challenge of our future. Will we be one nation, one people, with one common destiny, or not? Will we all come together, or come apart? The divide of race has been America's constant curse. And each new wave of immigrants gives new targets to old prejudices. Prejudice and contempt cloaked in the pretense of religious or political conviction, are no different. 
these forces have nearly destroyed our nation in the past. They plague us still, they fuel the fanaticism of terror, and they torment the lives of millions in fractured nations all around the world. These obsessions cripple both those who hate and, of course, those who are hated, robbing both of what they might become. We cannot, we will not, succumb to the dark impulses that lurk in the far regions of the soul everywhere. We shall overcome them. And we shall replace them with the generous spirit of a people who feel at home with one another. Our rich texture of racial, religious and political diversity will be a godsend in the 21st century. Great rewards will come to those who can live together, learn together, work together, forge new ties that bind together. As this new era approaches, we can already see its broad outlines. Ten years ago, the Internet was the mystical province of physicists. Today, it is a commonplace encyclopedia for millions of school children. Scientists now are decoding the blueprint of human life. Cures for our most feared illnesses seem close at hand. The world is no longer divided into two hostile camps. Instead, now we are building bonds with nations that once were our adversaries. Growing connections of commerce and culture give us a chance to lift the fortunes and spirits of people the world over. And for the very first time in all of history, more people on this planet live under democracy than dictatorship. My fellow Americans, as we look back at this remarkable century, we may ask, can we hope not just to follow, but even to surpass the achievements of the 20th century in America and to avoid the awful bloodshed that stained its legacy? To that question, every American here and every American in our land today must answer a resounding yes. This is the heart of our task, with a new vision of government, a new sense of responsibility, a new spirit of community, we will sustain America's journey. The promise we sought in a new land we will find again in a land of new promise. In this new land, education will be every citizen's most prized possession. Our schools will have the highest standards in the world igniting the spark of possibility in the eyes of every girl and every boy. And the doors of higher education will be open to all. The knowledge and power of the information age will be within reach not just of the few, but of every classroom, every library, every child. Parents and children will have time not only to work, but to read and play together and the plans they make at their kitchen table will be those of a better home, a better job, the certain chance to go to college. Our streets will echo again with the laughter of our children, because no one will try to shoot them or sell them drugs anymore. Everyone who can work, will work, with today's permanent underclass part of tomorrow's growing middle class. New miracles of medicine at last will reach not only those who can claim care now, but the children and hardworking families too long denied. We will stand mighty for peace and freedom, and maintain a strong defense against terror and destruction. Our children will sleep free from the threat of nuclear, chemical, or biological weapons. Ports and airports Farms and factories will thrive with trade and innovation and ideas. And the world's greatest democracy will lead the whole world of democracies. Our land of new promise will be a nation that meets its obligations, a nation that balances its budget, but never loses the balance of its values. A nation where our grandparents have secure retirement and health care and their grandchildren know we have made the reforms necessary to sustain those benefits for their time. 
a nation that fortifies the world's most productive economy even as it protects the great natural bounty of our water, air, and majestic land. And in this land of new promise, we will have reformed our politics so that the voice of the people will always speak louder than the din of narrow interests, regaining the participation and deserving the trust of all Americans. Fellow citizens, let us build that America, a nation ever moving forward toward realizing the full potential of all its citizens. Prosperity and power, yes, they are important, and we must maintain them. But let us never forget, the greatest progress we have made, and the greatest progress we have yet to make, is in the human heart. In the end, all the world's wealth and a thousand armies are no match for the strength and decency of the human spirit. Thirty-four years ago, the man whose life we celebrate today spoke to us down there, at the other end of this mall, in words that moved the conscience of a nation. Like a prophet of old, he told of his dream that one day America would rise up and treat all its citizens as equals before the law and in the heart. Martin Luther King's dream was the American dream. His quest is our quest, the ceaseless striving to live out our true creed. Our history has been built on such dreams and labors. And by our dreams and labors, we will redeem the promise of America in the 21st century. To that effort I pledge all my strength and every power of my office. I ask the members of Congress here to join in that pledge. The American people returned to office the president of one party and the Congress of another. Surely, they did not do this to advance the politics of petty bickering and extreme partisanship they plainly deplore. No, they call on us instead to be repairers of the breach and to move on with America's mission. America demands and deserves big things from us, and nothing big ever came from being small. Let us remember the timeless wisdom of Cardinal Bernardine, when facing the end of his own life. He said, it is wrong to waste the precious gift of time, on acrimony and division. Fellow citizens, we must not waste the precious gift of this time. For all of us are on that same journey of our lives, and our journey, too, will come to an end. But the journey of our America must go on. And so, my fellow Americans, we must be strong, for there is much to dare. The demands of our time are great, and they are different. Let us meet them with faith and courage, with patience and a grateful and happy heart. Let us shape the hope of this day into the noblest chapter in our history. Yes, let us build our bridge. A bridge wide enough and strong enough for every American to cross over to a blessed land of new promise. May those generations whose faces we cannot yet see, whose names we may never know. Say of us here that we led our beloved land into a new century with the American dream alive for all her children with the American promise of a more perfect union a reality for all her people with America's bright flame of freedom spreading throughout all the world. From the height of this place and the summit of this century, let us go forth. May God strengthen our hands for the good work ahead, and always, always bless our America.